Hi, I'm Molly Quinn, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology in the Division of Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility at UCLA. And today, I'm here to speak about fibroids and impact on fertility. So fibroids are benign, meaning non-cancerous tumors that arise from the wall of the uterus. They are surprisingly common. To 20% of women of reproductive age will have fibroids. In some populations, they may be more common. Up to 50 to 80% of African-American women have fibroids. Where there is one fibroid, there are often many. <laughs> and whether or not a fibroid poses an issue for a patient in terms of symptoms or a desire to conceive really depends upon three factors. And those factors are location, size, and number. So let's focus on the first, location. So there are really three main types of fibroids. The first is a subserosal fibroid, and this arises from the outer wall of the uterus. This is the most common type of fibroid. The second is an intramural fibroid arising from within the wall of the uterus. And then finally, the least common but most impactful type of fibroid is a submucosal fibroid. This protrudes into the uterine cavity where pregnancy would develop. Approximately 10% of infertile women have fibroids, and fibroids which are inside the cavity, so those submucosal fibroids, and the large intramural fibroids, they tend to pose the greatest impact with respect to fertility. How? By impacting the uterine cavity size, where pregnancy needs to develop, or altering the uterine lining, by altering blood flow to the uterus and the cavity. And finally, if a fibroid is large enough, a fibroid could potentially obstruct the fallopian tubes. And this importantly is where egg and sperm meet. So how we would address the fibroid really depends upon their location. And we talk about treating fibroids with the goal of fertility, we're primarily talking about surgical approaches. And that's because most of the medical management is contraindicated in the setting of desiring pregnancy. So if a fibroid is within the uterine cavity, those submucosal fibroids, we can actually do a minimally invasive procedure where we place a camera through the cervix into the uterus and we can use a blade to shave or excise that uterine fibroid. Importantly, this type of surgery does not pose any delay with respect to timeline for attempting conception. You can try in the immediate next cycle. If there are many fibroids, or if the location is outside the uterine cavity, an abdominal approach may be recommended by your surgeon. This may involve a single incision on the lower abdomen in a similar fashion as a cesarean section incision, or multiple small incisions on the abdominal wall if we're using a laparoscopy or a robotic approach. The approach to removing fibroids from an ab abdominal standpoint really depends upon the fibroid size, the fibroid number, the location, also your surgeon's preference. Importantly, if there's an incision made from the outside on the wall of the uterus, a recommendation of delay of three months is usually made prior to any attempts at conception. So today we've learned that fibroids are common, that they may or may not pose a barrier with respect to fertility. They can be addressed surgically, and that approach may depend upon the size, the location, and the number of fibroids. Thanks so much for joining us today.